Hi everyone, welcome to Regression Analysis Lecture. This is one of the subjects in the uh, Statistical Science Study Program, uh, Department of Mathematics, University of Indonesia. So, um, last time we learned about the uh, variable selection, that is um, the stepwise procedure. For this session, we will um, learn other methods of selecting uh, variables or selecting uh, an optimal uh, regression model. Okay, um, this is called all possible regression selection procedure. Um, the one, uh, the ones that um, put in here are four most common methods that are used for as a as a basis for selecting um, the model. Okay, so the first one is the R squared. I think that you are familiar with this one. Uh, the second one is um, the adjusted R squared or the MSE method and is given by this formula, but then it can be uh, shown that this formula is equivalent with um, this one in the form of the mean squared error. The third one is the CP criterion that is given by this formula and the fourth one is the TRAS criterion given by this formula. Okay, for this session we will focus on um, reviewing the concept of R squared and R adjusted squared. Adjusted R squared I mean. Okay, so what is actually R squared? This is given by this one. Actually, it's just uh, 1 minus the uh, sum squared error. Okay, so here we have... Okay, so R squared is that 1 minus the... Uh, sorry. Okay. So we have here r squared is the 1 minus sum squared error. What is the sum squared error? Okay, just to, um, just to remind you that if we have the model, our multiple regression model in the form of beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus blah 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 plus beta p beta p x p if we have that model then mm, and then we have the model fit is given by that is let's say we have our data and we fit the model to the data so then we have the model fit is given by y cap equals to beta not cap beta not cap and then I just copy this plus beta 1 cap x1 oopsie x1 plus so on up to beta p cap x p okay so that's our model model fit and then the sum square error here is that given by um sum squared error so it means that that's the error error is that the difference between the actual value that is yi minus the um, predicted value okay minus the predicted value so we have that is that yi cap yi cap and then that's the error and then the square of it and then we sum it okay so the sum okay let's say n is our sample size okay so that's our sum squared error and then um, actually this is not sum squared error this is sum squared residual okay because this is the white cap that is we uh, take it from the sample the sum squared error it should be is that expected y i should be like that if we want to be very strict okay and then what is the sum squared total here 
So the sum squared total actually is given by that um, the difference between yi and the average of y. Okay, and then you take the square of it and then you sum it over i. Okay, for the whole sample spa, sample space, uh, sample size. Okay. Okay, since here we talk about sample size, so then for this one, I'll just return for the first expression, that is the uh, yi cap, okay? So this is uh, what is explained by the r squared, that is um, sum squared error divided by sum squared total, and then we take it away from the from one what does it mean actually um we can see it that um in here okay let's just do some simulation here i already um put in um, some calls for us to do the simulation so to see what does actually it means by the uh, r squared Okay, let's say I generated a sample size, um, a sample of size 100, and this is how I generate x, and then I form y as a function of x. So basically, the data looks like this, okay, the relationship between x and y. Okay, so the sum squared total in here, what does it mean? Actually, is that from this formulation, Okay, because the aim of the regression is that we want to explain why based on some other information. Uh, and usually those informations are from the explanatory variables. But in the case that there is no explanatory variables, then usually we will explain why based on uh, the summary of why. And the common one that uh, usually used to explain it is just the average of that measurement in this case is the y bar so if you want in this uh, illustration if you want to explain the value of y here and then okay let's say we don't have any information from x then how do we explain it usually we just use the central tendency that is the numerical summary summary in the form of y bar okay so then we Take the y bar here, and then this y bar um, is um, used as a summary of to explain the value of y. Okay, and here so we can see like what is the first y, what is the second y, what is the third y, up to all the way what is the last y. If we explain it using y bar, so there's only one value. Okay, so this number, there's no variation in here in explaining y using y bar. And the error of doing that approach is that because the first one, the first y is here, but then it's represented by the dot in this red line. So the error is the distance between this point and this line here. The error of representing the y in here, the dot up here, with the y bar is then represented by the difference between the dots here, that is the actual value, with the represent, uh, representing value, that is the y bar. Okay, so the total error for the whole data is that, you know, the total difference between each of the data points to that y bar. Okay. But then we can't just take the sum of the error because there's uh, a possibility that the sum could be zero because this negative error, this is the positive error. There might be zero, so we think of something else to represent it. And here it is the sum squared total. Okay, so this number actually representing the total square error of explaining yi with just the y bar now 
we put we move on to the recreation okay let's say if there is kind of like some other information that helps me to explain why in a proper way then i be very happy to do that and that's how we include the x variable the explanatory variable so let's see if we use the um, linear regression model to incorporate the x to explain why what is the result and then we can do it by putting here so uh, this is the regression y um, explained by x through the linear regression and then here is the result so then now we can say that what is the value of y Okay, we can guess it using the points in the blue line here. Okay, so then we can say that, okay, for this, the first point, oh, okay, I think the value is up to in this uh, position. For the point here, I can represent it using, you know, the corresponding dot in the blue line and so on. So in here, we can see that uh, there is kind of like variability in explaining the value of y. For example, what is the value? Of, how can you represent the value of y for this point? And then you can ask, okay, what is the value of x? Then given the value of x, then we can just guess, oh, y is around here. And then for different x, we have different guessing for the value of y. So there is a variation, there is a variability of y in our story compared to if we represent using the red line. Okay, whatever the value of x, we just come up with um, a constant in here. And then we can also see here that the blue line is much closer to each of the data points compared to the red line. Okay, and then the error of telling the story about why using uh, this blue line is that we can just calculate the difference between each of the points with the corresponding point in the blue line. Okay, and then we don't just take the difference. Okay, uh, and sum it up because then again, they might be like, you know, cancel out and the sum could be, probably can be zero because there is some positive errors and negative errors. So we just take the square of the error and then we sum them up. That's what represented by this uh, sum squared error in here. Okay, and so for the... Um, for the R squared here, so we can see that, okay, if our model, so then from this illustration, using Y is there is no contribution at all from the X. And then if X is a perfect uh, explanatory for Y, then we can say that all points are like, um, uh, what is it? perfectly on the y. For example, if I put y something like this, let's say y is like this, here I put the some noise in here to make it the points like a little bit scattered. But if I put it like this, okay, no error, then we can have a perfect point on the line here. Okay? So in this case, if x is a perfect explanatory for y, all the points would be on the blue line, okay? The red line is the case where x no, contribute, um, no contribution at all from x in explaining y, okay? So then, according to this formula here, according to this formula here, that's why we have a perfect model should be that the sum squared error should be zero, right? If it's a perfect model. So then if the sum squared error is zero, then R squared should close to one. Okay, um, R squared should be one if it's uh, if sum squared error is zero. 
but if it's um, this only happens when you know it's extremely like this but usually there is some error okay some noises and then if the um, if x if the explanatory variable does not contribute at all in explaining why then we can say that the sum squared error here okay so if the x does not contribute at all then we can say that for each of the y i cap is just the same with the y bar okay if x is not contributing so that's why in that case the sum squared error is just the same with the sum squared total the ratio becomes one and so the r squared is zero okay so a good model uh, is the one with the high r squared and uh, the one with the uh, uh, yep, yeah. and the one with the low r squared. I mean, the r squared close to zero. Then the uh, it's uh, kind of like representing non um, what is it? Low contribution of x in explaining y. Okay. So that's uh, the first criterion for uh, model selection that is about the coefficient of determination or R squared.